this little area here will be easy for me to fill in. I'm just going to uh, shake up some resin and dab it on there with uh, some uh, with a paintbrush, and then use a UV flashlight to harden it, and then file it and work it in. It's it's not a big void, but it is a good lesson learned that I need to pay attention during a a, a project. How much resin do I have in the vat and um, always have more than I need and contend with having to pour it back into the bottle and clean up, which uh, is the next thing I want to hit on. Oh, and this also, I, I tried the heavier supports just to see what they look like, and boy, they are heavy. And I'm just hoping when I cut them off, they don't really impart too much uh, 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 noise or damage into the front half of the ship. But I'm really pleased with how the Elegoo uh, printed its speed and just how easy it was to work with. But not using the Chichu Box Slicer, using the Lychee. I just love the Lychee. Um, I've got a video I think I shot that kind of focused on it. So um, uh, the next thing I wanted to hit on was I am absolutely now sold on water washable resins. I am not going to unless there's some something that really is is just absolutely uh, 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 remarkable about the old style resins the water washable this stuff is solid it's not brittle uh, but the biggest thing is the cleanup and just handling of the water after you get done with the wash um, it was so much smarter going with the water washable than sticking with the original resin that required isopropyl. This here, I had to fill the uh, tank up to about, uh, what is the top here, uh, 8,500, uh, 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 8, uh, 8,500 milliliters of of water. I can imagine what that would cost if that was isopropyl. Uh, that's almost two gallons, uh, if not two gallons. And then when you're done, even though you could probably wash multiple models in that uh, uh, isopropyl, you have to store it. And it's flammable and it's just, it's just, uh, the, the, the vapors are just, you know, um, uh, just another issue compounded with the odor from the resin, which, which I have to comment, this particular resin, uh, which I had never heard of the company before, uh, I talked about it in an earlier video, I, I don't have the box in front of me, um, it, uh, its odor was quite uh, tolerable compared to what I remember the other, the old, uh, the resins that I used to work with being and uh, that was quite a quite a pleasure. I've got some filters coming in. I got a bunch of stuff coming in uh, this week uh, from uh, Amazon. So um, uh, the odor content or odor level uh, with this was much much easier to deal with than what I remember the other stuff for. But just getting away from isopropyl because all I had to do with this was when I got done washing, I. I set the water, I, I set this out in the sun for the day and let the sun uh, cure whatever resin was in the water. And then I ran it through a coffee filter, well, actually two coffee filters twice into a, a, a bucket. And then I have a, a, a small hole that I dug out back and lined with some black plastic and just dump the water into that and it's out there right now and letting the sun just evaporate uh, and, and whatever is left, um, uh, I'll, I'll check it. It should be fully cured dry resin, which is inert because this stuff is, I think, uh, the same kind of stuff that uh, dentists use to make dentures with now. So um, unless I uh, uh, find out uh, that it's not, as far as I know, 
once the resin is hard, it's, it's uh, non-toxic. And by putting the water out in the sun and letting evaporation cure, what I'm left with is fully cured resin that I can just throw out. Isopropyl is just, it's just so yesterday. I'm not even going to ever uh, go back unless uh, there's something outstanding that this particular resin so far uh, uh, can't do. And this particular brand uh, being only 20, about $25 for uh, a 1,000 uh, uh, milliliter uh, jug, um, just, just, just absolutely can't say enough for it. So all in all, very pleased with the new setup, much easier than I remember my last two attempts at uh, doing resin based. And even though it is a little bit more labor intensive than my FDM printer, the outputs uh, make it worthwhile on certain projects that I need the uh, extreme detail and uh, uh, the washing process uh, is uh, something I can live with. Especially since now uh, they have wash and cure stations. And for the larger formats, I, I recommend the Anacubic uh, Wash and Cure Plus. It's the, uh, as far as I know, the biggest water tank and um, the uh, UV stack with the bendable uh, 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 portion at the top just did a great job uh, curing a little bit more unique models that uh, you, you have basically a blind spot. The, the inside of here is cured just as solid as the outside. One thing I do want to comment though on the Anacubic, when I did do this uh, uh, when I used this the second time with this particular model, uh, I got a violent vibration out of this thing during the wash. And so I stopped it and I looked as best I could in the water. I didn't see anything uh, that had gone through the basket and there was nothing on here that looked like it had fallen off and got between the blade and, well, there's really just the blade because uh, they use magnets uh, to do the coupling and there's no through uh, through tank uh, coupling, it's 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 a it's a it's just the magnet inside. What I found it to be was the bearing on the impeller at the bottom isn't preloaded, so uh, it along with a little bit of slop on the on the shaft was enough to create an extreme imbalance and that was what the vibration was because when I stopped it and then started it the vibration went away and then when I stopped it and started it for a second uh, clean cycle because I, I washed the parts for 20 minutes two 10 minute cycles uh, the second cycle it did the same thing but by stopping it and then starting it the vibration went away that's when uh, I when it was all dry and everything took the screw out took out the impeller or felt the impeller and I could feel there was enough slop on that shaft and in the bearing that I think that that's what I was seeing was an imbalance uh, on the impeller and uh, I, I took the screw out. I happened to have a shim that was the right uh, ID for uh, the uh, metal shaft that that thing sits on and I put that and, and, and got rid of the little play that was in there, I haven't had the vibration come back. So if you guys do get a violent, violent vibration out of that, take a look at the impeller at the bottom, and if there's a lot of slop in it, take the screw off and see if you can get uh, uh, some washers or something to get rid of any slop in the bearing, then you're only dealing with the normal slop in a, in a non-preloaded bearing itself, because uh, I don't know how you would put any kind of a preload on this bearing. Uh, the, the way the thing's designed, and it really doesn't need it. You just got to get rid of a lot of the slop uh, that I had, and that was uh, uh, cleaned up by putting, for me, a shim, but for most people, a washer would be sufficient. So anyways, I'm going to cut this short. This is already, already far too long. Um, people are probably passing out. Love it. Love it. Beautiful job, and I can't say enough for water washable resins. I, I, re I really think as more people start to use them, the manufacturers are going to abandon the old formula and start 
producing more and more the water washables. Just, just, just a no-brainer. So, anyways, uh, have you guys a great day, and uh, thanks for sticking, sticking with me. Bye.